Oh my god, what a poor damaged nails! In this video I will share a story about these nails and we will do a tutorial with transformation. Coming up! Hello guys, Anastasia here. I hope you have some popcorn because we have lots of work to do today. So these nails are badly damaged, but as you can see, already two-thirds of the length of the nail plate is outgrown, which means there's only one-third remaining which is really damaged and overfiled. Since the nail plates are very thin and sensitive, she used a regular nail polish on top, so I will start by removing it with a regular nail polish remover. When I shared a picture of these nails on my Instagram, most of you thought that this happened because of improper product removal, which is pretty common, but this is not what happened here. So I had to ask many questions to finally come to a conclusion what exactly happened. About two months ago, she went to a beauty salon to have extensions. Supposedly, the nail technician used dual forms technology with polygel. Overall, the client shared that she did not feel too much discomfort during the service. She only said that the cuticles were burning a little bit as they started to file the cuticle area after the product application, but other than that, she did not really feel any pain, so she was pretty happy with the result. But after two days, nails started lifting right from the cuticle area. As you can see, these particular nails has a pretty short nail beds, which means once the product lifts at least one half of this length, it will be already pretty painful and damaging to the natural nails. At that point, she noticed that the nails were pretty thick and she basically couldn't do anything like making a bed or taking a shower or washing your hair was pretty hard and painful because the hair always tend to get stuck into this part where the nail is already lifted. Just to let you know, guys, when I'm sharing a stories like that, my intention is not to say anything bad about the salon or nail technician. I simply want to explain what particular mistakes were done, how to fix them and how to avoid this happening in the future. I'm sure this will be helpful for those who are just getting started. Meanwhile, I am doing electric file manicure, I am using a flame bit and pushing back the cuticles. By the way, the skin is pretty easy to work with. The only problem, as you can see, some of the cuticles were not trimmed properly beforehand. So that's why it might be tricky when working with them at this point. But I'm sure we can fix that because at least we have some skin to work on and we do not have any cuts. When I'm done with one side, I'm switching to the reverse mode and working on the right side. The speed is about 15,000 rotations per minute. Now it's time to trim the cuticles. On some nails there is not that much to trim, so I have to admit this girl is lucky to not have that much cuticles. But on other nails there is more and some hang nails on the sides, so we are going to fix that. The skin is a bit oily, I can't say it's hyperhidrosis, definitely not, but it's a bit close to that, 
which means that for me it's so much easier to trim the cuticles with the scissors compared to an electric nail file. After that I will file the free edge, but most of the times there is nothing really to file, the nails are pretty short, and then I'm going to carefully take off the surface shine. I'm using 220 grit file because the nails are already over filed at some points. So be careful, but make sure you are not leaving any shiny spots. For this set I will use exclusive nail couture product, new pink monomer, eternal beige cover powder, Paris pink. First we need to apply dehydrator on the natural nail plate and non-acid primer. Take a look at this thumb. The sidewall on the right side is missing, it was over filed so bad, so we need to fix that now. So I am going to use this Paris pink powder, which is a beautiful champagne colored glitter powder, and I am going to create this missing sidewall with acrylic. I love using acrylics for this type of nails, because basically I am pushing back the sidewalls with my opposite hand. And then I will hold it for a while until the product cures and voila, we have a new fixed nail. But this client, she really wanted to have an almond or oval shape, which means this length will not be enough. So now I'm only creating a platform for the free edge and then I'm going to fit the form and create an extension. I warned her that in this condition having long nails will not be the best idea, so we decided to do a medium length, let's say the minimal length that they can be considered as an almond shape. I am using paper forms by tones and before fitting the form make sure that acrylic that you applied on the nail is fully cured, otherwise the shape may change a bit. And now, after I fit the form, we need to treat this part like we already have a long natural nail. So we will create something in between of almond and oval. Like I said, I strongly do not recommend creating long nails, but since her nails are already two-thirds on their way to recovery, I think that this length will be acceptable, but it's super important to do an infill on time and do not let these nails grow out too long and get damaged again. I turn my brush around and create a color fade because I do not want to apply this glitter on the entire nail. I will leave some space near the cuticle for the pink clear product, because it has a better adhesion and also for some reason I prefer when a glitter nail is created that way. So now I apply a transparent pink color, which looks almost like clear, near the cuticle, and also I need to seal the entire nail. Acrylic powder that contain glitter or pearl pigments in them always tend to set up much slower, and also they are not really designed to build an entire nail, so I recommend encapsulating this kind of application with a clear or clear pink at all times. I will also build the apex with the clear powder. Now when you are done, you need to wait for a while and carefully take off the form. Do not rip it off, be careful, and then I will pinch the nail, but do it super gently since remember, the sidewall is missing. Now I will proceed to the next nail and we decided to create a couple glitter nails, exactly like the one I just showed you and other nails will be nude. I will follow the same strategy here. First, I will create the free edge without using any form or anything like that, and then I will fit the form. When you're working with a client, it will make sense to not do it one by one, but first create this platform on all 10 nails. Then, once you're done with the last nail, the first one will be definitely cured by then, so you can fit the form and continue working. Do not apply too much product at this point. Remember, we are not building the nail yet, this is only the half of the nail, 
because we will need to add more product on the top. When we are done with the application, it is time to file and shape the nails. And this time I will go a little deeper into filing since you guys asked it. Normally I use 180 grit file. For this nail, since the cuticles were a bit sensitive, I decided to use carbide bead for filing the nails across the cuticles. It works really well because you can avoid touching the skin at all, which is pretty challenging if you are using a hand file. And also I will file the surface with a carbide bit as well. This one is with green abrasive mark, which is medium coarse. I usually use this one for filing acrylic products. But when I'm working with gel, sometimes I use the same one, but most of the times I prefer using the ones with the blue abrasive mark, which is softer. Filing part should not take too long, usually it takes me about 15 to 20 minutes. It even doesn't matter whether I'm using a hand file or electric nail file. And I always like to buff it at the end, so I will have the perfectly smooth surface and I always like to buff the cuticle area as well. So once I apply the top coat, you will not be able to see this gap between the product and the natural nails. After that, I always ask my clients to wash their hands and yes, that's totally fine to do that once the product is set. Then we added some design and this is not a moon manicure, honestly, I don't even know how to call it. It is something like outline of the cuticles with a crown. The color of acrylic powder that we used is a lot like champagne color. And I happen to not have champagne color gel paint to add this design, so I had to mix one. I used golden gel paint and added a little bit of bronze and silver. Wow. Yeah, swear to God I'm with it. I don't see nobody in my lane is quite go get it like me. Wow. Please don't be wasting my time with that business. Who are you kidding, man? Yeah, 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 yeah. Wow. Yeah, swear to God I'm with it. I don't see now the last step, sealing with the top coat, so we can finally see how beautiful these glitter nails are. Cure in LED for one minute and we are done here. Can you believe that these are the same nails we've seen at the beginning of this video? The client was extremely happy and she even shared that she was scared to go to any nail technician for a while because she thought that she might have the same outcome, so I'm really happy that I met her expectations. Thank you guys so much for watching. If this is your first time here on my channel, consider subscribing as I post new nail transformation and tutorials just like this one every week. And I will see you in my next one. Goodbye!